Graham, Managing Director of Retail Excellence Island. Jared Kyoan, um, Director of Studio 49, a web design and development consultancy. And Maeve Dwyer, Head of Customer Service, Quality and Marketing at DPD Island's largest courier company. Before we start, just a few words on our shop local campaign, Champion Green. Champion Green was brought to life by Kilkenny Design to encourage customer su consumer support for local business and to support the SME sector in adapting to current challenges and learning from each other on webinars like today. The campaign is organized in association with Chambers Island, Retail Excellence and the Small Firms Association and is generally supported uh, by Visa. A bit of housekeeping. This webinar is uh, being recorded and you can ask questions using the Zoom chat bar function. And a big thank you to our webinar team this morning. Now let's get started. The current pandemic has led to many businesses needing to reimagine their customer engagement methods, their sales channels and supply chains in order to continue to trade and serve their customer base. We know that a good number of consumers have been able to save a bit of money obviously only those that haven't been impacted or impacted too much by the current crisis, which means there is an opportunity there to entice consumers to spend more money on gifts, household improvements, and personal treats this season, almost to counter the difficulty and the difficulties that we had this year. A huge amount of this um, money is being spent online and will be spent online. And with stores and shopping centers likely to be restricted, in numbers, even after the lockdown, um, many consumers uh, will go uh, online and uh, online retail is going to be of huge um, importance. Let me bring in uh, Jared. Um, Jared, small businesses may not have much experience trading online. Uh, from, from your experience as, as a really successful uh, web design agency, what are the most important things to get right with your websites, websites to maximize sales online and win new customers? Uh, good morning, Sven. Um, so I suppose the, uh, some of the key things just in general on websites um, are to remember that uh, people can only see what they see on the website, so photography is incredibly important. Um, and uh, people want to be able to see uh, the product um, that you're selling clearly, see details of the product. Um, if it's a dress, they need to see the front, they need to see the back, they need to see the side, ideally they need to see it on. Um, you know, in, 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 in the current times with COVID, we've seen quite a large movement to um, brands uh, and retailers um, even taking selfies of, uh, of, of their products. So, um, we see uh, fashion retailers uh, wearing the dresses and putting putting those up on Instagram and so on, um, and that can be really successful. So photography is obviously really important. Um, the uh, in terms of let's say uh, uh, other areas in the general uh, scheme of things, delivery costs and delivery lead times are very important. Um, so uh, it's important to be able to, to to say what the costs are and to make it easy for people to find out what your costs are and where you deliver to. Um, but also how long it will take you to, to deliver to, 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 to around the country. Um, if you're able to do next day delivery or, uh, um, or even, you know, delivery within two days, it's definitely something to, 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 to post about and put on your website. Um, it's, it's a very, uh, it's something that will really drive people um, uh, to purchase from your site. Um, I think the statistic uh, that, that I read is something like 60% of online uh, consumers check the delivery and returns policy when they're making a purchase from a site. So obviously that need, that's important. Uh, another important area, especially in Ireland, is price. Um, price is quite difficult because, uh, you know, obviously re Irish retailers are smaller than uh, some, of the some of the competition overseas. So it would be important to price check where you can and see what you can do in, in terms of having a good price online. But where your costs are higher it would also be important to indicate why. Um, because you're most, more trustworthy, you're more well, you're well known, you're local, you can get on the phone, um, you can get the item to people fast, all the customs are paid, for example. Uh, you know, some people have had bad experiences of purchasing from overseas and being hit with a customs bill. So that kind of thing can be important. Um, also trust, uh, trust is crucial. People want to know, you know, they, people want to know they're, they're 
what they're buying, they want to know that it's going to arrive on time. They want to know that when they uh, make a payment, the payment will be secure. Um, and they want to know that if they have a problem, that you're a trustworthy retailer or a trustworthy person that they can solve the problem with. So um, using something like reviews.io or Trustpilot to show trust, um, um, including um, you know uh, people talking about you on social media, for example, for so social proof of trust. Um, so those, I suppose, are, are general things that you can get right um, and that are, let's say, reasonably easy to get right, some of those things. Um, after that, obviously, you have things like uh, uh, the ability to search and browse on the website and uh, pr um, good size information, for example, when people are buying. That's, ver that's very important, especially where you're worried about returns. Um, so uh, size information and information about the product to reduce returns rate is quite important. Um, in the run-up to Black Friday, uh, obviously this time of year is uh, critical for online retail. Um, a very, very nervous time of the year for, for uh, e-commerce uh, retailers and uh, agencies and so on to make sure everything is right. Um, it's important to get your promotions uh, set up in advance, you know, know what you're going to promote. It's important to have good stock of the promotions. People get really vocal if they, you know, if, if, you, if you've only, let's say, 20 uh, of, of an item that you're promoting and you promote it in a big way on social media, people rush to the site to buy it and it's all gone within five minutes. Um, people can get, uh, consumers can get quite vocal about that. So I suppose be careful about it or have a good mix of promotions. Um, for certain, um, have something on sale on Black Friday. You don't need to promote across the board. You don't need to give like a 10 or 15% discount across the board. But it's critical because when people come to your site, they'll look for a Black Friday banner. They'll click on the Black Friday banner and they'll, they'll, they'll go to see what you have on offer. Um, if they don't see a Black Friday banner, they'll probably leave your site in seconds. So have a Black Friday banner, keep people on the site, show them your offering. Um, it doesn't have to be, uh, let's say the world's best offering. Um, people are willing to buy a lot, like a lot of things that they wouldn't normally buy, they're willing to buy on Black Friday. Um, so having something on offer is important and you're very likely to get uh, at the full price on other products that people purchase while they're on your site. So you don't have to go into sale across the board. So um, that sort of thing is quite important in the lead up to Black Friday. Um, and obviously- if Sorry, sorry Jared, for interrupting you there. I think we're gonna, gonna discuss in a second how we're gonna paint Black Friday green and how we can uh, <laughs> all put on the, 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 the green jersey in relation to, to uh, shop local and buy point. Irish. So it's, it's the, the Green Friday banners we're going to see on the website. But they're going to leave that. Your Green Sorry. Friday banner is on the website. You need to make sure you have your Green Friday offerings. Absolutely, Sven, you're totally right. So apologies for interrupting you. Yeah. Not at all. Um, I think I was pretty much at the end of, uh, at the end of it anyway. So um, yeah, so preparation in, 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 uh, preparation in advance of Green Friday is going to be critical. T tell me, you must be extremely um, busy, obviously, as, as a, as a um, web agency. Do you see, um, um, after you've um, supported your, your customers, do you see that they're growing themselves as well? Do you, uh, do you measure their growth? Can you, can you measure success? Um, absolutely. I mean, as, as anybody knows, in the world of e-commerce, everything is measurable. Um, what we did uh, after... after um, or during the lockdown and after the lockdown, we were curious to see what the real kind of impact was. I mean, obviously there was a lot of panic at the start and, and uh, a, lot of, a lot of confusion about what was going on. People, people, some people had turned off websites uh, at a certain point because they weren't sure whether they were allowed to operate the websites. Um, but it quickly became clear that people had moved, uh, consumers had moved online in a huge way. So we saw a peak of sales um, in April and May in May, uh, May is where we saw the peak. And how we measured it was against Black, Black Friday, Green Friday, uh, last year in 2019. So that was uh, the month of November um, in 2019 had record breaking sales, which is, which is typical every year now. And uh, May this year was four times higher across all of our clients uh, than, than uh, November 2019. So um, what we did was we took all of our clients' results, we looked at conversion rate, uh, we looked at sessions, we looked at revenue, we looked at average order value, and um, on all metrics, bar average order value, which was interesting, but on all metrics, there was huge, uh, huge increase across the board. Um, kind of like the back of my wall here, it went whoop, up for uh, May, it went down a little bit, and uh, I'm assuming it's going to go back up again in November. But it never went below, the, the revenue never went below the, the levels of November 2019 yet this year. 
um, since March. Um, so at the moment, um, it's holding steady at about uh, 25 to 50% better than November 29 last year. That means that retailers have been seeing Green Friday months every year this year, um, four times uh, that level. And I'd imagine DPD, uh, my colleague Maeve, has, is very aware of the, the, the throughput. So what I would say is that um, there have been huge sales. Um, and we've seen that across the board. And what's been very gratifying is some small uh, boutique operators. So people with only one store or craftspeople um, with very, very small, uh, uh, small physical businesses have done phenomenally well. Some, some, of, some of our clients um, on the smaller scale could be into seven figures um, for this year. And these are people who are operating out of small towns around Ireland and might only have a couple of stores, maybe only one store sometimes. Um, and uh, they have really capitalized on online. And what, what that, that's a very optimistic message because what that, what that shows is the appetite in Ireland among consumers in Ireland to purchase online and to purchase online from Irish, from Irish people. And I think Irish retailers have forgot a little bit in the past that you know, if, you're not, if you're not in it, you can't win it. You need to be in the competition to win. So if you're gonna try and take on the likes of Amazon and uh, UK companies uh, coming, trying to come into Ireland, you need to put your product up online. You need to get, you need to get online in the first place. Um, and anybody who has been online has done phenomenally well this year. Um, and that's the, that's the real proof. And I know that there was that figure bandied about for years um, that 70% of uh, consumers in Ireland purchased overseas or 70% of all transactions were purchased from overseas. What that shows is not how strong the competition is. It, it kind of shows how, how we've left uh, that market open and, and now, now Irish retailers are starting to properly reclaim that market because that market is there to be taken. So uh, the initiatives like Green, uh, Green Friday, Champion Green, and these sites where, where, which are bringing the Irish retailers together and, and getting the word out there and, and displaying the great range of product and the great range of even crafts and manufacturing um, that's happening in Ireland and making that available to people online um, is, is well overdue and it's great to see it now. Um, and the response that we're seeing behind the scenes uh, as an agency that kind of has, we, 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 we operate with lots and lots of retailers across the board. Um, we're seeing a phenomenal response behind, uh, behind the scenes and the growth online has been, has been staggering this year. Um, so it's definitely something that, that, that people need to get on board with, I would say. Thanks, Jared. It would be interesting to see now um, how this statistic has changed, whether this 70% this, uh, has come down after what you just said to us, uh, how phenomenally successful those were that, that were really making an effort and moving their business online. Um, maybe if you've been already um, name-checked a couple of times or, or your business has been, um, DPD has been name-checked um, a couple of times, you must be really uh, extremely busy at the moment. And from the stories that you can read in the paper, um, you are among the most popular people uh, in the country. I mean, nothing nicer than when you're stuck at home to receive a, a parcel from, from your favorite online shop. How is it going for you at the moment? Yes, Sven, it's incredibly busy and it's been lovely to hear the stories of how, you know, the drivers um, are building up rapport with the, the consumers as, uh, um, at home as the online shopping um, growth has, has continued. Um, I suppose that from, from DPD's perspective, um, we in, in May of, of um, this year um, had the same throughput in terms of, of volumes as we had um, in peak 2019. So as we head into November, December 2020, we're calling it our second peak because um, that's exactly what, what it will be for us. So we've had to make um, quite significant um, changes to, to our network infrastructure, to even our hub operation here in Athlone to be able to, to support the, the increase in volume. And we, we expect at the end of this year that the parcel volumes will have increased by about 40%. So we've, um, we've 36 depots around the country. So over the course of the last four to five months, we have been expanding um, depot size so that they can manage the, um, the increased volume. We, you'll have seen um, um, our, our announcement a few weeks ago with regard to um, increased resources. So we're, we're still actively recruiting um, drivers into the, into the network. So yes, it's been an incredibly um, busy time for DPD. 
Uh, tell me, um, yesterday I was on a on a call with a with a with a retailer, uh, and she had to interrupt um, the call a few times because uh, customers were ringing on the doorbell for for click and collect, mm -hmm. and and uh, she 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 um, managed to do this a few times. But but obviously this is not always possible. And and uh, um, Duncan knows this. Um, government have a preference for for online deliveries rather than customers uh, coming uh, into the shop rightly or wrongly. Um, but um, what looks like a simple process uh, may probably uh, needs a bit of planning. Um, what advice would you give our um, listeners this, this morning in relation to assessing the delivery needs and preparing uh, for a safe and cost effective shipping of goods? Okay, well, I would say the, the critical thing is that um, your delivery partner and yourself have a good understanding of each other's requirements. And I suppose I'll talk from, from the delivery partner's perspective. It's absolutely critical that we understand what the um, what the requirements of, of the, the shipper is, what their volumes, um, their anticipated volumes are, the profile of the, um, the end customer to whom they're delivering. Um, uh, Joe referred to um, the importance of calling out the delivery timelines on um, on the 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 e-tellers e website um, that's very important information from the consumer's perspective um, and really you know providing an understanding at the outset with regard to what the anticipated delivery timelines will be um, engaging with the shipper to um, understand whether they will send out communications um, uh, through the process of the delivery um, journey letting the consumer know um, at what on what date the delivery will um, arrive? Are there options around um, changing delivery address, for example, or rescheduling um, delivery dates? All of those um, types of um, uh, initiatives can actually help deflect. Um, customer queries back into into the um, into the store or into the into the e-tailer with regard to um, to when to expect delivery. And, and tell me, um, what is best practice when it comes to, to packaging and labeling uh, for, for uh, uh, on-time deliveries. Have you got any advice for, for, for our listeners this morning? Sure. It's important, I suppose, to realize that when um, a parcel um, comes into um, a carrier's network, it'll be handled at least eight times between the point that it's actually collected to the point that it's delivered. Um, so it's absolutely critical that the packaging is, is robust. And one of the, the key um, things that I would point out is um, to ensure that the, um, the delivery label, which generally will have a barcode on it, that 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 barcode is completely visible, that there's no strapping placed over it, that there's no tape placed over it, because that can impede the ability of any automated systems to actually read the barcode and direct the parcel um, effectively. And the other um, uh, key thing that I'd, I'd point out is if um, a, a shipper is using recycled packaging, which they may do, um, to make sure that that packaging is still robust and that they have removed any old labels from the packaging as well because if there's an old label left on the parcel it can cause the the, the parcel to be rooted in correctly um, too and I suppose the other key point is that um, uh, delivery of parcels through a parcel distribution network is quite different to pallet delivery so it's not sufficient to expect that an item that has arrived into your store on a pallet in whatever packaging it's had on the pallet that is most likely not going to be sufficient um, to, to travel through a parcel network. So it's important to bear that in mind. And Tommy, um, before I, I move over to, to, um, to Duncan, um, just a quick question in relation to delivery costs and, and keeping them, them low so, so to, to allow for, for small local businesses to, to remain com competitive. Is there any advice you can give? Well, I suppose delivery costs are all um, based on the, the type of product that's to be delivered, um, the volume and, and also to the, the, the end point that it's going to. So uh, the, the, the delivery partner will, will look at all of those elements to come up with the most cost effective um, uh, pricing for the, the customer. But I go back to the point of looking at the um, additional extras that might um, be available through a carrier, like the messaging, like the information 
information that's available via the carrier's um, website because all um, of those ancillary um, pieces can actually help to reduce costs in a kind of an indirect way. If you're not having to deal with customer services queries, then that does reduce your, your, your cost, maybe not specifically on the delivery piece, but in general. So they're important elements to bear in mind. Um, and for example, um, we ourselves, uh, when we're sending out messaging, for example, we will dual brand the messaging. So we'll include the, the shipper's brand as well as the DPD brand. And that, of course, all helps with, with brand, brand awareness across the board. We also have a very strong um, social media presence and we engage with, with our customers you know, to do collaborative pieces with regard to our brand and their brand. And again, that all helps disseminate the message with regard to, um, to the customer and, and, uh, and their products. Thanks, Maeve. Uh, now I'm gonna bring uh, you in, in Duncan. Um, from, from, from your membership, um, everybody's speaking about K-shaped recovery. You must have really um, a split membership, um, ones that are lucky that are being classified as, as essential uh, retailers, and then those that have been categorized as, as uh, non-essential. Um, and and um, I'd say everybody is really looking at um, the, um, um, the numbers at the moment, the COVID-19 numbers, what are you hearing from, from, from your members and what's the expectation, Duncan? Um, yeah, look, I think I'd start then by saying, isn't it horrible that at this time of the year, we're talking about non-essential and essential? Um, you know, if, if there's ever a time of the year that all retail should be classed as essential, it's now. And um, I really just... You know, I, I know all the arguments. I just can't get my head around the fact that we're, you know, we're into this this space. Um, look, I, I think um, we were all expecting uh, back two weeks, two weeks ago now. Um, I, I suppose prior prior to the two weeks, thinking we we knew we're heading towards a bit more of a lockdown. Uh, we were we were certainly hoping for something a bit more lenient than actually was was the result. Um, and you know, it was really gut wrenching when we woke up on that Tuesday morning. Uh, to realise that we were going to be locked down at level five for, for six weeks. Um, and there is absolutely no doubt about it that um, you know, retailers are, um, you know, very disappointed. But they're, they're on the knee um, and it's very, very difficult at the moment. Um, you know, clearly, you know, we've had all these arguments. But they, I don't need to replay them around what's essential, what's non-essential. And the government have certainly got into... Uh, quite a flap over it and, and in terms of um, you know deciding one one from the other um, I think things have, have settled a bit um, there's certainly some evidence out there that you know there are one or two that are still flouting the rules um, but um, you know we, we frankly we are where we are I think our push with government now and we were, we're almost on weekly calls now with the Department of Business and Enterprise and I think you know our push now is can we get retail back up and running before the 1st of December, which is the sort of cutoff date that they've given. Um, and, you know, particularly uh, when you consider the, how big Green Friday is um, for Ireland, um, you know, what can we do to get things up and running before, um, the, the, you know, at this sort of midway point, I guess, which is around the, you know, the 16th or so of November. Um, so, you know, that, that, that's what we're pushing government for. And certain things that we've asked for them have been, you know, um, that maybe we need some form of appointment based shopping for a period of time as a, as a run up for, to, to, to Green Friday. So maybe the week before we start to introduce uh, appointment based shopping. Um, we, we've talked to them about some of the larger format stores like furniture and, um, and garden centres and so forth, where it's clearly a lot, a lot safer. You know, can we can we open up those businesses earlier? Uh, and can we get going going with that? So, you know, those are the sorts of things we're asking government for. Um, you know, at the moment, I know we're being listened to because we're having these regular calls. Um, but obviously, when you listen to what was said last night by the Taoiseach, you know, it's six, you know, six weeks is what it's going to be. Um, obviously, that's the public view. Uh, as I say, behind the scenes, we're really pushing for for something a little bit earlier than that. So, you know, it's incredibly difficult. And I think the final thing I'd say on this, Sven, is that, you know, it's great that, that we're, we're going and we're talking online. Absolutely fabulous that we're talking online and that there's been so much of a development of e-commerce with Irish retailers during the course of this year. But certainly the feedback we're getting from retailers 
uh, at the beginning of this week is that you know trade for last week was significantly down clearly it's not you know online will not take over from bricks and mortar you know it is an addition to it's a it's a part of a multi-channel retail offering and when you look at what has happened when when we shut stores down you know we lose 80 90 percent of the business for a period of time you know and, and that is just not sustainable and we do need government to take action earlier than the 1st of December. And that's what we're pushing for really hard at the minute. Uh, obviously, as, as you mentioned yourself, small businesses are very resilient, um, Duncan, and, and small um, retailers are very resilient. And as you said, some of them um, are moving um, online or most of them have moved online. Um, others are getting ready now for the, the reopening and, and uh, preparing their, their shops. Just um, before we go into this in a bit more detail, uh, can you remind um, our listeners this morning what the government supports are for moving uh, your, your business online? Yeah, so there's two main ones. I think for the small businesses, it's been the enterprise uh, vouchers, online vouchers that have been available. Um, and then for the larger businesses, there has been somewhere in the region of 11 million euros worth of funding uh, in two lots during the course of this year. So the first lot was around the summertime um, uh, when that was about five and a half million that was that was available then. That funding was released, uh, I think, late summer. It was August, September time. Um, there are about 160 odd retailers that, uh, that picked up some of that funding and then on the back of that with the July stimulus there was a second round of Enterprise Ireland funding um, that was put out again for around five and a half million um, and the applications for that closed I think it was at the end of September beginning of October um, and that uh, the announcement on the, the successful applicants for, for that funding is due out uh, I think it's next week or the week after so um, you know, there's certainly been that funding available. Um, but look, at the end of the day, you know, not every retail, not every retailer out there has got the uh, the necessary finances or the necessary you know operational skills to be able to move their business online rapidly. So, you know, there's still an awful lot of businesses that haven't been able to do those things. And, you know, I think, again, this is a push to government. There is a there is a bit of a view, I think, within government that, you know, sure, it'll be all right, guys. We'll move everything online for six weeks. You know, that's that's fine and dandy, but it, it it's not going to take account of very many retailers who just simply have not got to that point yet and haven't been able to get the funding, you know, and are currently sitting there, you know, with very little trade, you know, relying on customers phoning up and looking for something. So, you know, it, it, it's it's not certainly not, um, uh, you know, it's not the panacea for everything. And, 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 and you know, um, business will struggle inevitably big time over these next six weeks and it will be difficult uh, to recover that in the new year. So um, the, the, to the bottom line, Sven, is there's funding available. It's not going to result in everything. And we certainly, from Retail Excellence's point of view, will be looking for more of those online retail schemes uh, you know, to be launched again next year. And, and the government, are, I think, are uh, reasonably, um, you know, uh, playing ball on some of that. I think we'll see that that happening next year as well. Um, just before I bring um, the, the the others in again, um, Duncan, you touched on it. Um, Pre-booked uh, shopping appointments, um, probably longer opening hours. Uh, wh mm. How? Uh, what way do you envisage um, um, retail um, to reopen um, when we build up for the the busy Christmas uh, period? Once yeah. we are actually allowed to open. Yeah. So I think the first thing that we've said to government is, is look, retail, generally speaking, through since, you know, when you get since since March, retail has been pretty safe. Um, you know, there are very few have been very few cases reported and inevitably been clusters. And there were certainly clusters during sort of September, October, when the when the cases started to rise. But generally, retailers have done everything that's been asked of them throughout the whole of this lockdown period to make their premises safe. You know, we've seen perspex screens, we've seen um, hand sanitizing, we've seen face coverings, you know, the take up for face coverings uh, in, in stores, and I know there are there are groups out there who don't believe this, but, you know, the take up generally from the public has been fantastic with all of that, and retailers have been great at, at putting those things in place. So the first thing has been uh, making sure that premises are safe, right? Um, you mentioned it, you know, we're certainly pushing for appointment based shopping initially. Now, it's not, you know, it's not the ultimate. And obviously what we need here is that um, retailing is opened up properly uh, as of around that Green Friday, free Friday point and gives us a real 
opportunity to claw some of that money back through December. So, you know, point of shopping, certainly one, one aspect of it. Um, you know, uh, we've talked around cranking up things like uh, curbside collections and all of those, those types of things. But I, I, you know, there is really going to be an emphasis on, first off, the government telling us exactly what that reopening date is. Because many retailers, when faced with the lockdown two weeks ago, will not have retained staff. They'll have put those staff on the, on the pandemic unemployment payments. And they need to go back and recruit people back into their business. They need to retrain some people. We're going into December, which is, we all know is the busiest time of the year. You know, the danger here is that uh, we're going to go into a frenzied December, you know, because of the fact that we've been locked down for November. And therefore, you know, any opportunity to smooth things through in terms of longer opening hours, uh, getting that lead in time, um, you know, making it a little bit easier to get in, in and out of cities and town centres and park and all of those things has got to be welcome. Um, so those are the sorts of things that we're pushing government for at the moment, at this moment in time. We need to make sure that December is as safe as possible, but we also need to make sure that December is the time that we can claw back some of this lost income from November. From a, from a consumer perspective, the uh, retail will be reopening with flexible solutions, uh, with appointment-based um, based shopping experience, with longer opening hours to really accommodate um, the, the customers and to, to make sure everybody's uh, getting what, what they want uh, for their family uh, for, for Christmas, which is, which is basically good news to see how, how flexible the retail sector is. Um, Jared, just a quick question for you. Um, you hear a lot about... Um, platforms, sites that market goods from, from different sectors like, like fashion or craft. Is that sort of, would you recommend this to, to uh, small business owners uh, who have their own website, who have invested in their own website? Would it be an effective way to complement what they're doing already? Yeah, um, absolutely. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, it, it's been a very typical thing in over the years for uh, large scale, even large scale retailers in Ireland um, to complement uh, what they're doing themselves online through their own website um, with marketplaces, um, obviously such as Amazon and so on, um, which would have been, let's say, a, a typical thing traditionally. Um, so now uh, that's moved on a bit. Um, there are quite a few sites in Ireland um, where people can either list products or get themselves listed um, uh, to be to, to sell their products uh, in Ireland to Irish consumers, um, it's 100% uh, a, a good approach um, for retailers, both retailers who don't have uh, who aren't trading online yet, because it can be quite easy to get the, your product up there um, and to get a kind of a taste of what it's like to sell online and to deal with you know um, uh, pick pack and delivery couriers and customer service online and so on. So as a dip your toe in the water type approach. Um, I, I, I can't name names, I suppose, but I, I definitely know one or two fairly large uh, retailers um, who are on platforms um, such as Bizu, for example, um, in, in terms of fashion, um, uh, who aren't quite online uh, on their own website. Um, and they're doing they're doing pretty well through, and they're 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 talking very positively of of those kinds of uh, those kinds of routes to market. I mean, above all else, the I mean, like the, the main thing is that you know, as as uh, all retailers know, the footfall is is critically important. Um, so the location of your store, how many people pass it on a daily basis, um, how are you going to get people into the store, uh, and uh, and that kind of a thing. Um, when you when you transfer that idea to online. Um, the footfall is uh, the kind of the Grafton streets of the world and so on are these marketplaces which have uh, generated a lot of um, uh, uh, brand recognition and marketing to deliver traffic um, to retailers who want to put themselves on those, uh, those platforms. Um, so it's 100% it's a valid way of, of putting, yourself, putting yourself out there. Um, you know, I mean, there are there's, there's some downsides to us occasionally. Um, there are obviously sometimes there's a margin that you need to pay or a commission for the sales that you make um, and that sort of thing. But uh, right now it's, 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 it's definitely a way to go. And, you know, um, obviously uh, 
companies uh, like efforts like Champion Green, for example, um, are a phenomenal way also of retailers joining forces with, with a larger group of people to get their to get the word out there and to try and drive traffic um, to their own websites or to to to, to wherever they're selling. Yeah. Uh, Maeve, a question has just come in uh, for you uh, from, from Joseph. Um, any advice you can give to, to local businesses that are delivering to local customers? Uh, do DPD cater for this? So we have 36 depots around the country, um, Sven and Joseph. So pretty much a depot within, within every county if not more than that. And each of those depots are collecting and delivering within that, that local area. But we do have that, the penetration then that goes throughout the whole country. Um, so I suppose what, I, what I'd say to Joseph is that, that, that our solution covers both the, the, the local deliveries and, and the, the wider, not just Ireland, actually into, into Europe and, and beyond as well. Although, of course, there would be other local solutions with maybe individuals in, in vans that are available too. And before we go um, um, to talk about the 27th of November, the weekend and the build up, which is Green Friday, um, just a, a question from uh, Teresa. Um, price plays a huge factor when buying local or within um, the country. When a shopper compares against the bigger, uh, um, bigger e-commerce brands, are we doing enough to ensure Irish consumers feel like they're getting value for money? They ask us to buy local, but are we thinking of the consumer price? So maybe a question for uh, Jared and, and Duncan. Um, I, I, yeah, it's, it's something I kind of picked up on a little bit in, 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 in something I mentioned earlier on. Um, you know, typically Ireland, the, the prices for retailers in Ireland are going to be a bit higher. Um, you've got a, a higher rate of, you have a higher rate of VAT here. Um, uh, we have the cost of getting the product to this country in the first place and that sort of thing. Um, I, I think that the, the, the efforts being made by, uh, by, by the likes of uh, the Champion Green um, initiative and so on have put the idea in people's minds that they would like to buy local. And I think that there is now a tolerance for, for purchasing at a higher price. Um, so I, I myself uh, uh, bought something recently um, to try and uh, to try and calm myself down after the the, the announcement of the second lockdown, um, and I bought a I, I bought a guitar, an electric guitar. I've always always wanted to have one. Uh, Play guitar for years, never bought an electric guitar. And I thought I I went I, I went on a German website, which is quite well known, and uh, found a guitar that I liked, and uh, then went to Pro Musica here in Cork. Saw the website, saw the the same guitar in Pro Musica. It was a good bit. It was a good bit more expensive, um, but you know, reasonably, I think, like within you know, let's say a five percent to ten percent more expensive kind of range. Um, and to be honest, I, I was more than happy to give the business to Pro Musica than to. To, to, to a company overseas. And I think that that's a kind of a general feeling across the board now where people are looking and, and they're willing to, to kind of give that an extra bit of tolerance. Um, beyond that, I mean, you can also talk a lot about local, not, 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 not supporting local, but uh, consumers getting local support. So I know if I've got a problem with this uh, guitar for any reason, I'll be able to walk back into uh, Oliver Plunkett Street um, and speak with Eileen and Simon Pro Musica, um, who I got to know quite well over the course of purchasing the guitar. And, um, uh, and then um, uh, get, get some support from her. I know that she's gonna be very willing to, to deal with me. And, um, you know, so so you have that kind of a that kind of a, an, a, an added benefit. That's that's a, a USP. I mean, that's that's a, an, an additional selling point. That that's a reason for spending a little bit more, having those additional supports, which is which is what you get from buying from a local retailer. So I, I think there are a couple of things coming together. I think the, the the initiatives like Champion Green are putting the idea in people's minds that they would like to spend local. It's a good way to do things now. People are thinking that way. I think people now have this increased tolerance to do that. And I think that if we also explain to people why they should do that. Um, because also things like the customs are paid up front and, and there's no question about, you know, you're, you're not going to be worried about where it's coming from. You can trust the retailer, you know the brand and all of those kinds of things. If we talk about that a little bit more on our product pages, um, I, th I think that we will be able to, to get that additional price that is needed. Sven, I, I'd agree with what Joe said. I mean, you know, there seems to be this real... Uh, through things like Champion Green and so forth, there's been this real feel-good factor about buying green. 
um, and buying Irish. And I think that really needs to, it will continue through this Christmas. There is no doubt about it. And I think people, consumers, consumers are aware that, you know, if they're buying something like a guitar from uh, in Cork, you know, they're going to pay a little bit more for it because, you know, they're not buying from somebody that's, you know, produce or selling things in <clears throat> masses of volume and therefore you know it's, it's important to support local and I think um, you know that's going to be something that we'll see happening. Um, I think there is this green wave if you like and I think you know over the course of this this next few weeks as we run up to Christmas that green wave is going to continue and I think customers have you know at the end of the day if they feel that they're being ripped off in some way they will inevitably shop somewhere else. So, you know, let the marketplace deal with it. Um, you know, if you're setting the market right, if you're setting the price right, then let the marketplace deal with it. But people are savvy. They do know that if they're getting it locally, they have got those things that Joe talked about. They can take it back. You know, they can deal with any queries that are coming up. And I think that's worth something. Um, and, and, you know, I think the marketplace will, will sort itself out over, over time. And, and there is this green wave that we all need to, to ride. I'd like to come in on, on just a couple of things that are coming in. There's a few questions um, that are coming in which are quite similar uh, to do with um, discounting. How, how much do you need to discount? Do you need to slash prices uh, to compete? Um, or, you know, or can you can you have a more sustainable and affordable approach? Um, for years now, we've been looking in Studio 49, we've been looking at the effects of Black Friday. Um, and um, what we have noticed is that people, consumers, when they come to a website, they want to see deals but they don't need to see deals across the board so they want to see something uh they want to see some some that you have some black friday deals they want to be brought onto your website uh and and, and see that you have special offers sometimes those special offers uh might be things you're just trying to get rid of you know for want like for want of a better word you you know i i i know for a fact one of our one of our own clients uh, about three years ago um did black friday for the first time and the, the MD had his trailer filled full of stuff that he was going to take to the dump um, because he needed to clear the stockhouse uh, ahead of Christmas. Um, and uh, they were pulling all the stuff back off the trailer because they had sold it online because they just put it up at bargain basement prices. Now, you know, that's, that's just a story. But um, what, what I would like to kind of say to people is to, to take a kind of a reasonable or a measured approach to this. You know, give discounts on things that you can afford to give discounts on. Certainly look at your stock and see, have you got things that you'd like to, to, to slash prices on, we'll say. Um, but by all means, have a full, have a, have a set of full priced products that you are then upselling to or cross selling. People will come on and they might see that you, are, you have a 10% or 20% discount on, on one product, but the better version of it is still there and they might still buy the better version. Um, very likely they'll buy more than just one product during Black Friday. So you might sell one or two uh, uh, discounted products. You might still sell a couple of full price items. So I, I would be careful about the mix. I definitely would um, would say that people shouldn't shouldn't slash prices across the board. I mean, if you slash prices across the board, you'll definitely get the sales. Whether you'll have profit at the end of it is, is the question. So, you know, just be measured about it. We're nearly at the end of our session, so let's talk about uh, not Black Friday, Green Friday. So as we all know, um, um, the 27th of November, the CEO did the weekend around this, and then Cyber Monday are uh, the traditional online and in-store shopping bonanza. And obviously, we all put our green jersey on. We're all members of the Champion Green Initiative. So Black Friday is now Green Friday. Um, maybe it's not um, Black November, it's, it's Green November. And Champion Green uh, launched um, this week the campaign to encourage uh, local shopping and keeping the money here in Ireland with an extra 50 euros to be an extra 50 euros to be spent in Ireland, which would bring an extra 180 million euro of every single grown up spent his money in 180 million euro for the local economy. Uh, we've already touched on it, but just for, for the three of you, how can small businesses and retailers gear up for this now for a busy uh, digital and traditional marketing, marketing campaign, including logistics? Maybe uh, with, with start with Graham on this one. Me. Um, yeah, look, I, I think we've, we've spoken about it, haven't we? I think it's, 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 it's staffing, it's making sure you've got people uh, available. And I think, you know, it is really difficult because we are in a situation of not knowing whether we're actually going to be trading bricks and mortar on Green Friday or not at the moment. And I think we have to assume that we need to 
to, to, to make sure that we've got enough people to deal with the, uh, the additional demand. Um, I, I think it is, you know, it's the things that Jer's spoken about in terms of, you know, what sort of offers have you got on your website, you know, making sure that you've got a good balance of product, making sure that you're promoting it, not just, you know, think about, you know, your shop, your shop window in two, two parts. One is your shop window, which is your website. And the other is your shop window, which is your physical shop window. What does it look like? You know, if you've been closed for a period of time, have you put, have you, have you gone in there now and started to think about the offers you want to put in that window? And do they reflect what you've got on your website? So things like that, you know, does your shop look presentable from the outside? Because a lot of people are still walking through um, towns and villages in, across the country and they are seeing closed shops, sure, but they don't want to see closed shops with shutters down that are selling, you know, spring summer merchandise or something. They need to see something that looks as though it's ready to open up. The shot, shutters are going to come up and we're going to start trading and it looks like it's Christmas. You know, so if you haven't put those Christmas decorations up yet in the store, if you haven't taken that step forward and if you aren't into that seasonal place, you know, make sure you're there. Make sure that you're reflecting Christmas, that you're encouraging those gift purchases, you know, and you've done it now in anticipation of, of Green Friday. Um, you know, don't wait till the day before to, to suddenly find out that actually you could open up and, um, you know, or, or, or you've got, you know, you've not prepared online, you're not ready. Um, so put the preparation in this week, not, not you know, late November. Maybe from a delivery perspective, Maeve, uh, what uh, do you think um, a small business owner should do now to be really prepared for, for the, the Black Friday Bonanza, the Green Friday Bonanza? The Green Friday Bonanza, okay. So just a couple of things. So firstly, um, talk to your uh, delivery partner with regard to, to your anticipated um, volumes um, spend. Secondly, set the consumer expectations. So update the um, uh, delivery information on your website with whatever is relevant now with regard to your delivery partner. If your delivery partner has specific information on their own website with regard to um, service, provide a link to that. For example, DPD, we have our own peak page, dpd.ie forward slash peak. So drive the consumer to, to that location and um, make sure that you provide um, the delivery information also in the communications that you're sending to the, the consumer once the order is placed and follow up with your delivery partner as to what they're sending, trying to make that journey as seamless as possible and just keeping the consumer up to speed with what's happening at every step of the way. And by doing that, then it, it, it deflects um, from any queries that might come back into, into the, the, um, the shipper themselves. No, no famous last words for, for you, Jared. Um, well, a lot of my famous last words have already been said, um, but uh, I, I suppose it, preparation is is the key here. Um, definitely have a look at the rotas. Um, you know, it, it's 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 likely it will be a very very busy Green Friday season this year, um, regardless of your size. So make sure you have the staff or the people available um, to pack the bags, to pack the, the boxes. Um, make sure that you have enough packing material is a kind of a funny one, but, but sometimes people run out of it and it's terrible to be delayed in shipping product to certain customers who are going to be wondering where it is um, because you forgot to get some cardboard and, and uh, bubble wrap and so on. Um, so make sure you have that side of things uh, squared away. Um, to Maeve's point, um, it's well worth having some um, let's say pre-recorded or ready to run messages around some delays for shipping or delays for uh, you know um, in terms of getting product out to people um, uh, so that's when you know when you're in the in the height of things and it's you know you're rushing around uh, you don't have to go and get a graphic designer to do a banner to, to explain to people that things have been very busy and um, so have that kind of thing ready in advance um, and I, um, I suppose, prepare the customer service angle as well. Um, regardless of what happens, you're very likely to be behind on getting product out the door and, um, and, and, and picked and packed and all the rest of it. So you will need somebody to man the phone lines and uh, answer customer service queries and so on. A great idea, Maeve, uh, to point everybody at DPD customer service, um, super service. <laughs> we have our peak page there so we're going to point them to that and we're keeping that up to date with all of the relevant information so hopefully that will provide all the details that they need Do web agencies use that as well I might point <laughs> <laughs> no 
Um, yeah, preparation, preparation definitely, Sven, is key on, on all fronts. And uh, that's a great idea as well from Duncan um, to, to, to make the shop, your own shop window, look like you're open uh, and that you're open online or, or, or wherever the case may be and put some messages in there and make it look good, um, put on a good face and things um, for the town centres as well, because there's plenty of people still wandering around. Great. Um, so just one last question here for kind of just came through for, for, for Duncan. And um, as, as you mentioned, the appointment based shopping, um, there was, was one participant here wondering uh, uh, about considering a Zoom based shopping appointment. Uh, would that work too? Uh, yeah, I don't see why not. I think that, look, anything that's novel uh, around those sort of things at the moment, I think that's a great idea. You know, if, there's, if stores are opening up to, uh, you know, I, I think I, I saw something in the media, I think it was a couple of weeks so John Lewis's famous um, uh, uh, Christmas shop in Oxford Street in London uh, was actually going virtual. So I think you can actually now, and I haven't checked it out myself, but I think you can now go and walk around the Oxford Street uh, John Lewis shop virtually now. At this point. So, you know, if you can create that on Zoom uh, in your own store, why not? Give it a go. Um, let's, let's, uh, let's almost have a prize for the best one, I think, Sven. It's a great idea. Okay, that's, that's a really good idea. So, so well, uh, on that note, uh, thank you so much, Maeve, Jared, and, uh, and Duncan. Really good session. Um, thank you to the Champion Green webinar team. Thank you to all our participants this morning. Don't forget to check out the Champion Green website, championgreen.ie, for more advice and inspiration. And uh, thanks, everyone. See you soon. Thanks very much. Bye for Bye. now.